Welcome to my views and news. Viewers title of this video is Can Fano Fighters Reach Ethiopian Capital Addis Ababa? Some viewers would find this title shocking or inappropriate. They would say Sajid wants to fuel conflicts in Ethiopia. Two points before I uh, speak on this topic. David Walde Georgius is Amhara Popular Fund's foreign relations in charge. Skandar Naga, around two months ago, formed uh, Amhara Popular Front, an armed faction of the Fano fighters, and he nominated uh, David Walde Georgius as the head of foreign affairs of this organization. David has been raising funds for Fano. He's been visiting uh, different countries. He was in Israel, then he was in Germany uh, this month. It is David, or the Georgius, who spoke about Fano's intention to reach Addis Ababa. In Washington, D.C., a fundraising ceremony uh, for Fano fighters was held. It was attended by David, or the Georgius. ETO 360 journalists and there he said that uh, this fundraising, these funds, this support would help Fano reach Addis Ababa, Ethiopian capital. So it's not my suggestion uh, that Fano uh, should uh, try uh, to reach Addis Ababa or it should have Addis Ababa as its goal. It is Fano's stated goal now. Question is, does Fano have the capabilities to reach Addis Ababa? Now, there are five steps when it comes to reaching Addis Ababa. Uh, and uh, post-arrival scenario in Addis Ababa is a different uh, thing. We will analyze a post-arrival scenario if, if Fano managed to reach Addis Ababa. In some next videos, we will analyze post-arrival scenario in Addis Ababa. If Fano fighters managed to reach Addis Ababa, what will happen next in next videos? In this video, can Fano fighters just manage to reach Addis Ababa? There are five stages for an armed faction to reach Addis Ababa. We'll have a look at these five stages. Before that, let's have a look at two other groups uh, which tried to reach Addis Ababa. Addis Ababa is their stated goal. Tegaraya fighters, they uh, were saying there was no one to stop them. Uh, there was no one between them and uh, Addis Ababa, Ethiopian capital. Addis Ababa was their stated goal. They were stopped in North Shore Zone, Romeo Special Zone. They were stopped in a far to uh, around uh, 100 kilometers away from Ethiopia Djibouti Road. So they could not reach strategic Ethiopia Djibouti Road, and they could not, and they were stopped around uh, 150 kilometers away from Addis Ababa in the Amhara region of Ethiopia. Between Tigray fighters and Addis Ababa, there was a long distance. They started from Makale. Makale to Addis Ababa, long distance. It was becoming increasingly difficult for them to manage their supply lines to keep them flowing. They became vulnerable to a strikes, don't strikes, and we saw that they had to retreat. They say that it was due to American pressure. Some TPLF supporters say it was due to American pressure that Tigray fighters withdrew. I believe it was due to what happened on uh, the battlefield, that they were not in a position. Had they been in a position to Yadi Sababa, they would have marched toward the capital. So, they were stopped. Why? Because I think Mackel is far away from uh, Addis Ababa. Though, uh, they had managed to fulfill three main conditions uh, 
rather four main preconditions to Addis Ababa. But since their main base was far away from Addis Ababa, they, their supply lines became vulnerable. Secondly, Ola, Romo Liberation Army, Fenfene is its stated, stated goal. It, it says it wants to reach Addis Ababa. What are uh, Ola's capabilities and what are Ola's shortcomings? Uh, briefly, Ola's stronghold is Vallaga or Southern Romeo, but mainly Vallaga. And again, Vallaga is far away from Addis Ababa, Ethiopian capital. Long supply lines, uh, difficult for uh, Ola to reach Addis Ababa. And uh, Ola uh, could never turn into an army. Uh, it always uh, worked as a guerrilla force. So, despite having Addis Ababa as its goal, it was kept restricted to Valaga. Whenever it tried to move towards Santa Romia, Ethiopian military launched operations, it was pushed back into Valaga. In case of Fano, five stages for Fano to reach Addis Ababa. First stage uh, involves Fano having its basis. For any armed faction uh, which wants to move towards capital, it must have its strongholds, its bases, its uh, own territory, where it can train people, where it can store its weapons, where it can organize uh, the entire movement. Fano did not have any bases, any strongholds uh, in the past. Tegarai, obviously, uh, TPLF had a stronghold, Tegarai, Ola, Valaga. Fano did not have any base. So the first step is that Fano, uh, like Ola, like Tegarai Fata, should have its base from where it can move. Different Fano factions have managed to uh, establish some bases. In the last uh, two months or so, uh, Fano fighters have managed to find some hideouts, some strongholds, though we cannot say that this particular area in the Amhara region is a stronghold of Fano fighters. Different Fano factions operating differently in different areas, independently, Shoa separately, uh, East Amhara separately, Gondar separately, uh, and Skandar's APF separately. So, it's difficult to pinpoint one area. but Gradually, reportedly, they have managed to establish some bases, some strongholds. That is why military has launched operations. Military wanted to dislodge them from their bases. Operations are not in cities, towns. Operations are in mountains, forests, where Fano fighters are based. So, first step is that Fano should have bases. Launching uh, pads from where it can attack. Second step, Fano uh, will start attacking, carrying out, it will start carrying out attacks on government officials, on prosperity party members, on ENDF convoys, etc. from its basis. So, uh, this second phase is ongoing. Fano fighters now have this capability to carry out ambushes. To target uh, the uh, local government officials, regional government officials, security officials. We have seen that several assassinations in the Amhara region, starting from Girmanshitila uh, and ending with uh, Debre Birhan, police chief. Several assassinated, and some say more than two dozen. Uh, police officials killed in the Amhara region in the last two months or so. So, Fano has now, Fano factions now have this capability that from their bases, they can carry out attacks, they can organize, they can plan attacks on government offices, police offices, police stations. They are freeing their comrades. We saw that in uh, a town in Gondar, uh, Maksanath, 
a Fano fighter was arrested two days ago. Fano gave ultimatum. He wasn't released. Yesterday, hundreds of Fano fighters stormed the city. They freed their comrade. So they have this capability now that from their bases, they can carry out uh, small scale attacks, ambush style attacks, hit and run attacks, attacks on offices, hand grenade uh, attacks, etc. This is second stage in five stages required to reach Addis Ababa, Ethiopian capital. What is the third stage? Third stage would involve Fano fighters having control of territories, cities and towns. Direct control or uh, indirect control. Direct control means they will be in cities, towns. Indirect means they will appoint administrators. They will appoint mayors. No one will go against Fano fighters uh, orders. This is stage number three. This is what we are seeing in Valaga, in some parts of Valaga. Ola uh, government, uh, some uh, warrior officials cannot go against Ola's orders. They abide by Ola's instructions. Fano is trying to enter the third stage. It is in second stage, carrying out attacks and uh, surviving. After these attacks, we are seeing operations against Fano. But despite operations, Fano managing to survive, keeping itself intact, different Fano factions. And now they are entering, trying to enter stage 3. Difficult stage. How to be in control of town cities? Sooner or later, Fano will have to uh, move towards stage 3, I think. They'll have to capture town cities or they'll have to uh, appoint uh, leadership of their choice. When will they make decisive moves towards uh, capturing of town cities? We'll see in, in coming days, weeks, maybe months. But Fano is in stage two, trying to enter stage three, finding it difficult. We saw them in control of town cities, but they withdraw. They enter a town in, in, in Vagaltana in Maxanath, but they are not, uh, they did not remain positioned there. They did not re remain stationed there. They withdrew. Stage number three. By stage number three, I mean, they'll make local governments dysfunctional. What is stage number four? Regional government. Can they make regional government irrelevant? Can they capture Bahirdar or can they capture, can they make Bahirdar government irrelevant? This is stage number four. What is stage number five? That stage number five involves march towards Addis Ababa, Ethiopian capital. Fano has an edge. It is closer to Addis Ababa than Ola and Tigray fighters. Tigray fighters started from Makale, hundreds of kilometers away from Addis Ababa. Ola fighters Valaga, again several hundred kilometers away from Addis Ababa. Fano fighters are in Gujam, uh, 40, 50, 60 kilometers away from Addis Ababa, Ethiopian capital. So they are closer to Addis Ababa than Ola and uh, TPLF. But it's not that from Gajam any day they can reach Addis Ababa. No, they'll have to control Amhara region first. They'll have to be the ones to call the shots in the Amhara region. They'll have to be the government in the Amhara region. Only then they can think of uh, advance towards Addis Ababa. And this 60 kilometer long march towards Addis Ababa from the Amhara region isn't going to be easy. It isn't going to be easy. Though people say that Fano fighters have support in Addis Ababa, Ethiopian capital. 
but Ola does have support as well. Ola has been trying to establish sleeper cells in Addis Ababa. Fano uh, reportedly has been doing the same too. It wants to have its fighters, its sleeper cells in Addis Ababa. But this 60 kilometer distance from Amhara to Addis Ababa is going to be a challenge. Why? Because between Addis Ababa and Amhara, there is Oromia. So Fano will have to pass through Oromia to reach Addis Ababa. Will Oromia allow Fano fighters to reach Addis Ababa? Oromia has the largest regional force. Oromia had largest regional special force. Now turned into regional police. Will these tens of thousands of regional uh, police members, uh, FANO uh, government backed militia members, all our fighters, will they allow FANO fighters to set foot on Romia territory? So uh, it's easier said than done when people say FANO will reach Addis Ababa, it can easily remove the government, just Fano needs a few months organization, supply of arms, uh, then local will support Fano fighters. Addis Ababa, Amharas will support Fano fighters. No, it's not that easy. Very difficult. Tegarai had all the weapons which, um, which an army has. Uh, it did not have air power, it had tanks, artillery pieces, man pads, etc. MLRS. This military was stopped. It could not continue the march towards Addis Ababa. And Fano is not fighting a conventional war. Uh, it's unconventional uh, way of uh, uh, capturing a country through guerrilla war. That is why I say we are seeing start of a long insurgency in the Amhara region. Addis Ababa might feel the impact, but it's not that Fano has any capability to reach Addis Ababa at this point of time. It's far away, far away from Addis Ababa. Uh, as I uh, uh, spoke in detail about reasons, it's far away. So far, Fano is focused on the Amhara region. Then why is it using Addis Ababa's name? Obviously, it wants to get support from people. People, uh, some Amhara hardliners, uh, diaspora, they support this idea that Fano should be in Addis Ababa. The Abi should be thrown out of the palace. So they use this narrative to get support, to get funds. Otherwise, they're not in a position to get Addis Ababa now. Will they be able to reach Addis Ababa in coming uh, months and years? We'll see. So far, they are in stage two. Trying to enter stage three. Then there is stage four. Stage five is going to be the toughest one when Romeo will come between Addis Ababa and Fano fighters. Thanks for watching.